What do y'all think about putting that motor on that go-kart? Let's do it. This is a 75 or a 76 Honda CB550 four-cylinder. Uh, somebody gave it to me several years ago. I've had it running a time or two, uh, but it's been probably eight or nine years since it's ran. So I'll have to pull the carburetors off, clean them real good before it'll run. That go-kart I had when I was, I don't know, 13, 14 years old. It had a three and a half horse Briggs and Stratton on it. Ain't no telling how many miles I've put on that thing. I think it'll be a lot of fun to put that motor on here. I'll have to make some room for it. And I sat on that thing a little while ago. And, wow, I can't hardly get on it. So I'm going to have to move the seat back. And then I'll probably have to add some to the back end of it. Make room for the motor. I'll have to put an axle on it. But first, I want to get this running. So let me get these carburetors off here and get them cleaned up. And then we'll see if this thing will fire up. If you're ever working on a carburetor tearing it apart and you need to pull the idle jet out, well screw it in all the way first and count the number of turns and then you can put it right back like it was. This one is eh, not quite a full turn. I don't want to soak these carburetors. I don't want to have to wait. Uh, if, if there's one thing you learned about me, I'm pretty impatient when it comes to stuff like this. It causes trouble sometimes, but oh well, that's just how I am. This little tube right down in here, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's stopped up. It's supposed to come all the way up to here, or all the way across to here. Uh, I can't get it unstopped with just carburetor cleaner. So what you do is you just find you some copper wire, pull the strand of it out, and you get down in there, start jabbing at it, and it just broke through. Sometimes I've got a little drill bit set, really small, Sometimes I'll use them, but you have to watch and not make the hole bigger with the drill bits, because that will happen. Look at there. This is that little drill bit set I was telling you about. I try to start with the smallest one and work up from there. Cause all I want to do is clean that out. I'm not trying to rejet it.
All right, I want to show y'all this little trick. You got an emulsion tube down in here. It's got a lot of little holes in the side. This is where your main jet goes. Uh, you need to pull that out because them holes will get stopped up and it's not gonna run right. I see a lot of guys on the YouTubes rebuilding carburetors and they never pull them out. Let me show you how to get them out. Get you a tap that'll fit that hole and you just run it in there a little bit. Then you might need to tap it with a hammer a little bit. Then now be sure don't break your tap off in there. Most of the time it'll pull right out, just like that. And that right there is why you wanna pull that tube out. Those holes, you can't even see them on this side. And they're completely stopped up and they're just all kind of crud on it. So be sure that you pull them out. I attempted to replace the O-rings on the jets and the needle seat and I reused the old needles and when I put gas to it, it flooded like crazy. I think just about all of the carburetors are leaking. So I guess I'll order carb kits and put them in when they come in and see, see if that helps anything. I think what it is, the springs and these needles are really, really weak. So that alters the float level and causes it to flood. So I did the right thing finally and bought a carbon roster kit that came in today. So let's put these new parts in here and see if we can get this thing running. I see an issue with this carburetor. It has been eaten away from corrosion right here on the end of this jet holder. And there is no way that's gonna seal up, I don't think. So I'm gonna have to see if I've got another carburetor. I think I do somewhere, but I'll have to search for it and find it. Found a set of carburetors in the back of this old 51 Chevrolet pickup. It's become a storage unit for Motorcycle parts and there's quite a few four-speed transmission parts in there. I've got to get that stuff out and organized There's an old Honda 125. I used to ride when I was a kid And well, actually that's that's one of the motors. I would swap them out. They would bend valves and skip timing on the chain They were wore out and I would fix one put it on this frame and then fix the other one while I rode this one, and then this one would blow up, and I'd fix it and swap it out, and, well, I learned a lot doing that. It was fun. All right, I got this carburetor clean. The end of that looks much, much better. The slide was stuck. Got it loose with this stuff right here. Crow oil is the best stuff in the world. So, let's get this thing put back together and see if we can get it running. There's not even a number on this main jet, so I have no clue what size it is. Not only does the main jet not have a number on it, that O-ring is too fat. It won't fit in the hole. Here's the main jet without an O-ring. I wasted my money on this kit. Well, I finally got it in with a little white grease and a lot of persuasion. Well, this is just my luck. That's the idle jet that come in the kit. That's the one that was in the carburetor. And I think there's just a slight bit of difference. So, throw that one away. I need something to tell the captain right there. Well, this needle seat out of this carburetor kit is too big. It measures 319, and an old one measures 315. This old one measures 315. So these are 4,000 too big. So this carburetor kit is going to get a negative five star review. Well, here's another issue. I was going to use the new needle for the old seat. It won't fit. Won't fit either one of them. So basically I bought a carburetor kit for nothing. O-rings, that's it I guess. Let me see if I can sand this down a little bit, make it fit, because I really wanted a new needle and seat.
Yeah, I think that'll work now. That's pitiful to buy a kit and you gotta do that to it. springy that is. The old ones weren't like that they wanted to say so most likely my float level was way too high. Alright to set the float level on this one you lay it on its side and see it bounce. There's a little spring inside of that uh, needle and you want it where it's just barely touching that needle. Then to measure it you want to measure from here to the top of the float. According to the interwebs, it needs to be 22 millimeters or 866 thousandths if you're American, like I am. And you just measure from there to there. This one is a wee bit high, so I'm gonna adjust on it a little bit. All you do to adjust this, you see this little tab right here? If you want it to go down further, you bend the tab up. If you want it to come up further, you bend the tab down. I want mine to go down, so I need to bend this tab up just a little bit. It still needs to come up just a little bit. That's the close that I'm not even gonna worry about it. I'm gonna leave it right there. <laughs> this kit is a joke. Most of the time, they'll come formed to the shape that they're supposed to be. <laughs> All right, I've got it to the shape it needs. Now somebody come here and help me get it on the carburetor. What a joke this is. All right, I gave the O-ring a good stretch. And it is so close to being right. I think I might be able to get it on. Yeah, let's give it a try. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta put this on. Look at there, I think we got it. All right, we learned something today. You gotta stretch your O-rings out and hope and pray you can get them on there. All right, one down and three to go.
Well, they're ready to be put back on, so let's do that. All right, we got the carburetors on. I've got a new set of spark plugs I'm gonna put in it. I'm gonna give it an oil change, and if I can find some kind of gas tank, then we're gonna fire this thing up here just a little bit. Well, we got new plugs, got new Earl, got a new Earl filter. Found a little gas tank, but my points are messed up. There's supposed to be little insulating washers right there, and they all broke apart. So I've got to try to make some. So let me see if I can get that done. This is how you make insulating washers. Get you some kind of a thin cardboard like that. Cut a little square out like that. Get you a little punch like this. Put your hole in it. And then you put them on. Uh, this piece here has a slot in it for that bolt to fit in. Normally there'll be an insulator on the inside of that slot too, but I didn't have anything to make one out of. So I just centered it up in that slot before I tightened this down and then checked it with a meter and it checks fine. So let's get these points put back on and see if this thing will fire up. I just had to pull these carburetors back off because gas was just pouring out of every one of them. And let me show you why. You flip them right side up, your floats hang, turn it right back over. Well, now they don't want to hang. That one there is, that one there you well, it just broke loose. The needle is hanging in the seat. Take this little pick and poke that needle and see it fall. Well, it's got a little tang right there on that float arm and that keeps it from going so far. Well, I'm gonna have to bend them a little more because this needle seat is sitting up higher and I had to bend this tab and it's due to that crappy carb kit is what it's due. So I got to uh, bend these and get this where they won't hang and then maybe we can get it running. Carb rosters are back on and they are not leaking now. Points are back on, but looking at this cam, I'm gonna pull it off and clean it up because it's really rusty. Then I'm gonna check the points gap, and then I'm gonna set the timing, and then we're gonna try to get her started. Also, I've realized that this set of points is missing the condenser. I probably robbed it over the years and put it on something else. So I found this one, we're gonna try to use it. It's a good thing I decided to polish this up because I didn't know it had this advanced mechanism in there and it is completely froze up. So let me see if I can't get that unstuck first and then clean this surface up here to get back together and time it it took a minute but i got it apart it's really really nasty it wouldn't hardly move the cams all rusted up too so let me get this good and cleaned up and then maybe we can give it a try got everything cleaned up freed up got the cam polished the best i could advanced mechanisms working so now it'll go whoom pow whoom pow well, after several mishaps and technical difficulties, I got all that back together. Got the points gap set. I got the timing set. Got the condenser on. Carburetors are clean. I'm holding gas. It's got new plugs. It's got pretty good compression, so it shouldn't take a whole lot to get this thing fired up. So let me set the camera up and we'll give it a try. Let me get these OSHA approved jumper cables on and then we'll be ready. All right, here we go.
I mean, it fired right up. Well, I'm truly impressed with that. I just go show you, if you've got everything right, they'll fire right up. Speaking of everything being right, the carburetors ain't quite right. You have to sink them. When I was putting them together, I noticed some of the slides were open more than others. And you have to put a vacuum hose in this port right here on each one, hook it to a vacuum gauge and set all the carburetors the same. So let me get set up and then I'll show you how to do that. Let me show y'all something here. See this strap going from this to this? You have to have that on. I broke them when I was tearing these carburetors apart. And when I first started fooling with this thing, I revved it up and it hung. It hangs right here somewhere. These things will flop out a little bit and it'll hang right here. You got to have them on if you don't want that throttle to hang. Well, fellas, I've been fooling with this thing for a couple of days now, trying to get it to run right. And it just, I can't figure it out. It'll run. It won't run right. It won't let me idle it down. It, uh, sometimes it revs great. Sometimes it won't. I, I've been focusing on the carburetors, but now I'm thinking it may be ignition. I changed one of the coils out and that didn't seem to help. It's cylinder two and three, which is the two middle ones, and they're run off the same coil and the same set of points. So I'm gonna get a set of points and condensers and see if that helps it out. But at least we got it running for now. We know it will run, so we know we can use it. I think that's gonna end this video up. Uh, the format's fixing to change. It's hard for me to do 40 and 50 minute videos every week because some of my projects take two and three weeks to do. And I'm a one man show and I'm trying to do them in four or five days. I'm having to do all the camera work, make sure I'm getting a good shot, doing all the work. I'm having to do a couple hours of video editing every night and it's getting to be too much. So I'm probably gonna drop the videos down to 20 to 30 minutes and do two, three, maybe four part series. So with that said, I appreciate you tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. And until next time, go do something.